So I'm going to start. I am doing this is my second seminar. Yesterday I did one about uh, local bass fishing. This one is about choosing the right bait. And I'm going to go over three different lures. Um, I'm going to start top, middle, and bottom of the water column. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Flair. I make fishing YouTube videos. And so if you guys have any other questions besides what I go over today or what you ask, you can always check out my YouTube channel. And I do a lot of tips and tricks and bass fishing stuff um, as far as that goes. But that's who I am. I'm 18 years old, live in Omaha, Nebraska. So that's a little bit about me. Okay. So like I said earlier, I usually break things down into three categories. I like threes. Uh, first one's going to be top. So these are going to be top water lures. The next one will be middle. Those are search baits. Those are the ones you throw and you bring through the middle of the water column. And the next one's going to be bottom. Those are the baits that you drag along the bottom. So starting with top, I like a hollow body frog. So if you live around here, you guys know in the summertime, it gets a lot of weeds on the lake. So you can look out and there's just moss everywhere. There's grass. That's when I like to throw a top water frog. So I'm going to go over three modifications I do to that single topwater frog and talk about why I do those modifications and uh, just basically different things you can do to help you catch more fish. So the first thing I do, I'll grab one. So when you get a topwater frog, this is what it'll look like out of the package. The legs are pretty long, it's soft. I'll pass this around in a little bit and you guys can see it. So the first topic I have is long legs. So this is what I can consider long legs. So these have, this has a long the strands right here go along. This is what it looks like out of the package. Benefits of keeping it just like this, it's easier to walk side to side. When you have these long legs like this, it makes the lure walk side to side. If you guys use topwater frogs, that's what you want to do. You want to go side to side. It's called walking the dog. And uh, that's, that will help you if you keep those legs nice and long. They act as like little rudders. It makes your frog go side to side. Next thing, it's a bigger presentation. The, the bass thinks these are legs. It looks like a big frog. So sometimes you want a bigger presentation if you're on bigger fish. Uh, you're trying to get a bigger bass to bite. Um, sometimes the frogs are bigger. So anytime I'm fishing stuff like this that imitates a specific forage like a frog, you always want to match the hatch is what they say. So if you're fishing and you see big frogs that are you know, long leg, you want to keep your legs just like this. That way, because the, the bass are used to seeing frogs like that. And you want to throw around sparse vegetation. I don't like using frogs like this when the grass is super thick because what happens is the bass thinks it can grab onto these and get the frog, but it can't because there's no hooks right there. You're not going to catch the fish. So my next point, it'll be about making the legs a little bit shorter. So if it's super thick vegetation, there's no holes in the grass. It's very, very condensed. Um, I don't like to keep the legs very long. So anytime there's just little clumps of grass everywhere, like I said, it's easier to walk side to side. You get a lot of movement out of something like this. And this is just a video, so that has long legs on it. And I'll show you what I mean when I say walk side to side. So that, it goes one way, you twitch it, it goes to the other side. It goes to one side, twitches to the other side. So when you keep your legs long, this is what it'll look like. You keep the frog in one place, and you move it a lot. So, um, that's what I mean by walking the dog. So when you cut the legs super short, it's harder to do that. When you keep the legs long like this, it's very easy to do something like this. And the benefits of doing that is you keep your frog in the strike zone longer. So normally when you get bit on a frog like this, it's about the banks here, and that's the end of the strike zone. You want to keep that frog in that zone, that zone as long as possible, right up against the bank. That's where you're going to get bit. So if you're moving it and you're hopping it like this, you're getting out of the strike zone in two twitches. But if you walk it side to side, you can get 10 twitches out of it before you're out of that strike zone. This mainly from the boat going to the shore? Uh, no. If you're fishing from the shore, what you want to do, how I was talking about keeping the frog in the strike zone. So if you're standing on the bank, let's say this is the, the water starts where this drops off. You want to stand like this and you want to cast and keep your frog parallel to the bank. So if you're on the boat, you can cast to the bank and work it out. But if you're on the bank, you don't want to cast to the middle and work it back because you're going to get bit right in this area, right where the water starts. So if you're on the bank, you stand here, you cast and you bring your frog parallel. And that goes for any type of lure in general. Like you, always, you never want to just cast in the middle of the lake and bring it in. You want to cast at some form of an angle, bringing it up to the bank. What time of year? For frogs? Um, time of year for frogs, you want to do when the water's warm, uh, usually after the spawn. So that's like, uh, I probably start throwing a frog in May and stop in September. So any, during, any time during that period, you can always catch fish. Okay, but yeah, so just warm, warm water, for, and that's top waters in general. You always want to throw around warm water. Like right now, 
even if the lake's open. So yeah, anyways, yeah, warm water. So like right now, even if the water was not frozen, you don't want to throw a frog right now. They're not going to come up to the surface because if the water is warmer, it, right now the water is warmer deeper than it is shallow. But once it starts to turn spring, shallow water heats up quicker than deep water. So you use the same frog, it's not the same frog, but it looks the same. And that has a short, short legs, something like this. So the frog that I was passing on earlier had legs about down in here. This is how I throw with the frog 95% of the time. I usually don't keep it long legs like that for a couple of different reasons. It's a smaller presentation. Although we have big fish, although we have big fish in Omaha and Nebraska in general, this is just a smaller profile and you're gonna get a lot more strikes on this. So if you're going for that trophy bass, you might want to stick to something like this. But if you're looking to have a fun day with the grandkids or whatever, you want to trim down to something a little bit smaller like this. Less short strikes. What a short strike is, is when the bass jumps up and hits that area of the frog right there. There's no hooks. The hooks are right there. There's no hooks there. It, it, I'm sure if you've thrown this, you've gotten short strike. I've gotten short strike thousands of times. It's when they just grab the tails, they pull it down and it comes back up. The shorter your legs, the less short strikes you're going to get because if they think that's the start of the frog, they're going to get the hooks the first time that they jump at it, basically. And then like this one I said, you don't want to throw in thick vegetation. This one you do. And the reason why you want to throw in thick vegetation is because if it's coming over the top of mats <coughs> or weeds, stuff that's super thick, it's not, like I said, they're not going to hit the legs uh, as often as they will actually getting hooked. It all comes down to the bass eating the whole lure or not <coughs> eating the whole lure. That's kind of where I'm getting at with all this is it's just a lot less short strikes when you're using something like this. Make sure I'm not uh, missing anything. Um, and then another thing with frogs is you bury your retrieve. I'm sure that's the question that's going to come up is some people ask me, do you throw it out there? Do you twitch it and let it sit? Or do you move it quickly? I let the fish tell me what I want. I, I'll throw it out there and I'll move it quick. I'll twitch it a lot like we saw in that video, how it's going side to side. That's how I start off the day normally. And then I will slow down, do quick uh, a twitch and maybe let it sit for 30 seconds or something. And then one other quick tip before I move on is you can add rattles to it. That's something most guys don't do. And it's something that can make you catch a lot more fish, especially if you're fishing with or against guys that are using normal frogs. Because when I go to a tournament and it's a frog fishing tournament where people are catching on frogs, everyone's throwing this exact frog right here. So you can add rattles. They make, they're called worm rattles. You can put glass beads in there and it'll just make a little bit of a, a sound. And it's just gonna be something that's that much different, that's, that's different about your frog than everybody else's frog. And the whole thing with fishing is you, you wanna be different. You wanna throw different lures than everybody else. You don't wanna throw the same lures as every other guy going down the bank. Because the bass get, they get used to seeing those lures. They get used to seeing that spinnerbait come by and that crankbait come by. But if they see a frog and it rattles, that gets their attention. So the next one, someone already asked, is a popping frog. This is actually my favorite. And the one that I like is this one right here. This one I'm holding is called a Spro popping frog. There's a couple different reasons why you'd want something like this. It displaces more water. So that little red piece right there, that sit, the, the frog sits like this, and when you twitch it, instead of it just jumping up and down like a frog, it spits water, and it looks like a little splash every time you twitch the frog. And uh, like I said, you want to use it in open water, and the reason why you use it in open water is because it just makes a lot more commotion than a traditional frog. This little frog right here will just kind of hop along, it won't do very much, it won't make much noise. This one makes a lot of noise, it makes a big commotion, so if you're throwing it and there's just a couple grass clumps around nothing thick, you want to throw a popping frog because it gets the bass's attention. It's not a quiet lure. And it's irritating to the bass. Something most guys don't think is throwing frogs around the spawn. So if you've ever done bed fishing for bass, they make little beds, they lay their eggs on it, usually you throw a worm in there, try to agitate them to bite it. If you put this above their bed, that poses the same threat as a worm that's down in their bed. And like I said, if you guys don't know what a bed is, it's a little circle and that's where they lay their eggs. They're called beds. And um, throwing something like a popping frog, it will irritate the bass more than something like this because it just makes louder noise, it displaces water, does all that kind of stuff, and it just creates a reaction threat because they get angry at the frog. So if there's any times where that frog's not working, uh, I usually go to a popping frog. Another thing is if it's windy, and you still want to throw a frog, because I like throwing frogs. Like I throw this, I don't know, five, six months out of the year, and even if it's not ideal frog conditions, I always throw it. And it's just one of those deals where if it's windy outside, it just makes a lot more noise. That's something with bass is if it's, if it's windy, they can't hear and they don't have the senses as if it was calm. I mean, it's the same thing for us. If it's windy, you can't hear as well. It's the same thing. So if it's windy outside, you want to throw something like a popping frog. And then colors, it's another question I get asked a lot. I usually stick to stuff like this, the, that one right there and that one right there. 
just natural colors. You can't go wrong with black or natural. And again, when I was talking about match the hatch earlier, if you go walk down to the bank and you see a frog with that color belly, then look for a frog with that color belly. You want to throw exactly what the bass are feeding on. And that goes for anything. That can go for crankbaits, that can go for jigs, if it's the color of the crawfish, the color of the crappie, the bluegill, whatever. You basically just want to match the hatch. And one that's just kind of a surefire is, uh, is black, because black just, it, it's, it's not out there, it just looks natural. Um, it's not a crazy color. So that's what I've got for frogs for you guys. What questions do you have? What are frogs for me? Um, it depends. Uh, usually, it depends on what I'm fishing. A good, a good rod is usually seven foot two or seven foot five, somewhere in between there. Um, fast action, heavy. Uh, super. He I like using heavy rods because when you're throwing it, you get a fish and it's down in the grass clumps, vegetation, stuff like that. You want something very powerful to get it out. Reels, um, bait casting reels, of course and uh, seven to one gear ratio. And then line, 30 to 65 pound braid. Depends how thick the vegetation is. If I'm fishing kind of open water, I'll go 30. If I'm thinking, fishing thicker stuff, I'll go to 50 or 65. What about fishing buzz baits and spooks and hoppers and stuff in the summer? Shit, I came to my seminar yesterday. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you want to know about it? Just like. Like, what? Like when to throw them, or colors? Yeah, colors. Colors, buzz baits, white or black. Those are the only two colors I normally throw. Spooks. I usually throw white, like shad colored ones that are pretty light colored. Anything that imitates a shad. Um, what else? Anything else about them? No. Um, so never use a leader whenever you're using stuff like this. The thing with these, if when I pass it around, the hooks they are thick hooks. They're not thin. So it's, it's hard to get that to penetrate the roof of the mouth of the bass. So you want to use heavy gear. That's why I said 50 pound braid, heavy line. And uh, I normally don't use a leader now. <coughs> yes? How long do you wait to tuck the hook? Good, that's a very good question. Uh, it's usually a couple seconds. What I tell people that are learning is when a frog hits in your mind, say, set the hook. And the time it takes you to say that, that's how long you need to wait. It's like two to three seconds. But you kind of lose track of time when your heart's racing because you just got hit. So when you get hit, I mean, you can, I, when I, I said that loud, I, they hit and I go, set the hook, and I set it, and that's when I catch the fish. Usually a couple seconds.